Welcome back, beautiful people. Time to put on your dancing shoes as we're going toe to toe with one of the most elegant bosses from Dark Souls 3, the dancer of the Boreal Valley. And sadly, it is the last episode of this repainting series. The giveaway will be ending after this episode and I will be picking a winner next week, so be sure to stick around to find out how to enter the giveaway for one last chance to enter. And engage in jolly cooperation. So here is the dancer model from the board game. It's a sick looking model and they've done a great job with the pose of it as well. The original model from last year is actually the first ever post I did when I set up the Instagram page last year. So it holds a special place in my heart. And by that, I don't really want to bad mouth it too much, but instead we'll just try and improve upon what's already been done. So first things first, let's get her primed. That's a job jobbed. Now to Xenophil highlight one final time. From a high up angle, spraying down onto the model to create a light source using this white ink in the airbrush. This will look really nice on the cape with the flowing cloth movement. So starting on the cape, I'm first loading up some Leviathan Blue to the airbrush and just spraying this all over the cape nice and evenly. This contrast paint will sit really nicely within the shadows and the highlights of it. And to brighten up the blues for the highlights, I'm going to spray on a thin layer of this Talisar Blue contrast paint. And that's how the cape is looking. Nice and easy method which creates wonderful effects. Now to start the armor, I'm gonna grab my wet palette and onto it, I'm gonna be loading on some Abaddon Black. I'm also gonna be loading on some Eshin Gray and some Administratum Gray. And then finally onto it, I'm adding some Corax White. And with this, I'll be applying the non-metallic metal method and using wet blending to create the steel armor look. So starting off with the Ishin Grey and applying a thin layer around the edges of the pauldrons. I'm pretty sure that's the right word. And the light will be shining mainly in the center and falling off. So I'm then filling the center with some Administratum Grey and blending between the two greys. Then I'm just applying some white into the center and blending outwards to create that sort of shine look. Then it's just a case of adding variations of light and dark depending on the ridges and the shapes around the armor. The arms have these lovely little diagonal pointed gauntlets on them, which I will be painting darker the closer they are sort of inwards towards the arm, and they'll be lighter the further they are pointed out from the arm. And then just kind of edge highlighting on the tips of them will really make them pop. Then it's really just a matter of repeating this approach across the whole body of the armor, making sure to use glazes to blend between two colors, using the white for the brightest points and blending outwards the shadowed regions, sort of keeping a close eye on where light will be hitting the most and then falling off, blending darker the further it goes away. Just whilst I'm doing this to the rest of the armor, I just wanna say it's been a real fun test getting these Sunday videos out every week alongside with the Wednesday videos. And I just wanna thank all of you who've joined for the ride. It's been great reading all of your comments, seeing fan favorite bosses, most hated areas, favorite soundtracks, best gaming memories. It's felt really special getting to know a little bit about each and every one of you and what you all appreciate from these games. And I never really anticipated having Dark Souls take up so much of my life as it has done. So it's, it's just really nice hearing other people's experiences of it. So thank you sincerely. And I'm just sad that I can't give a prize to each and every one of you. So enough gushing from me. Um, for the headdress, I'm gonna paint it in with some Retributor armor for the gold tone. And just using a fine precision brush because these are very small little details and I don't want it to overspill onto this lovely smooth blue on the cape. Then I'm just gonna dry brush on some gold to the top of the swords here. Not fussed about adding much because the next step will be the flame effects. Now for the fire, I'm going to start off by adding some titanium white ink to create the halo effect on the sword. And to prevent any ink getting all over the model, I'm going to use this thick paper and just kind of tuck it behind the sword in front of the body to act as a kind of ink barrier. And then just spray the white all over the sword. For the first fire color, I'm going to use some pyrrol red ink and then start spraying it from the base of the sword and upwards, mainly kind of covering the underside of it and then removing the paper and spraying small amounts of it to the breastplate to create that kind of glow reflection. You see here, it's kind of looking glowy already. 
Then I'm using this bright orange ink and moving further up the sword, leaving sort of intermittent gaps between the red to kind of fill in some patches of orange. And then also applying this to the armor for some more reflection. Then same again with some yellow ink, spraying it on and moving up further up to the sword. And don't forget to add some to the armor as well to really beef up that reflection tone. Now to increase the vibrancy of these colors, it needs some shadow to bounce off of it to show how bright they are. So using some carbon black ink on the bottom of the base of the sword should do just the trick, giving little sprays and little patches here and there as well. And this is how the effect has taken shape. And with that, the final model of this set is complete. Now to just tidy up around her. Let's get a good look at the entire model here. Now, this is the original one as well. It's not horrendous for a beginner, but it's nothing majorly special either. And when you compare the two side by side, how much does this glow effect just like elevate a model? It really brings the sword to life and it sort of feels natural. It's really cool. And that about wraps it up, guys. So why don't we jump into the giveaway one final time? So here it is, the fully painted set, nine weeks in the making. And this is what is on offer for one lucky winner. So to enter, all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel and leave a comment below answering this last question. I'll be picking a winner from comments across all the videos in this repainting series. So the more videos you comment on, the more chance you have to win. I'll be picking the winner next Friday, which is the 18th of November. So make sure to enter before that date. And I'll be announcing the winner on the Saturday, which will be the 19th. Last week, you guys all commented your favorite original soundtracks from any of the Souls games, and man, you picked some bangers. However, for this final episode, I'm looking for a little bit of help from you. I would like you to comment below and tell me what you want to see more of from this channel. What interests you? What doesn't interest you? What was it that made you subscribe? What kept you around? Do you want to see more stuff with the actual game side of things? More models from certain types of games? more technical things like the actual 3D printing process and how the models get printed and how 3D printing works if you're interested in getting into that sort of thing. You know, you don't have to answer all of these questions. These are just kind of things that I'm thinking about that you might be interested in seeing the channel going down towards. So anything like this, comment below and tell me. It will go such a long way to helping me understand what you guys like. But for now, as ever, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop a like and hit the subscribe button. It really does help the channel grow and reach new people. I will be looking to do some more content on Sundays as well to release two videos a week in the near future, so stick around. But for now, I will see you all on Wednesday. Thank you for joining me along this repainting series. I've had a really fun time making it, and I appreciate each and every one of you for liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing with your friends, and just coming along with me on this little journey. Peace out, gang, and don't you dare go hollow.